Unscripted. Unshackled. Uncouth. What you're about to hear is for mature ears only. It's Miguel Fuller. I would show anything. I'd show my hee hee and my hoo hoo oh. and my ha ha. <laughs> Holly O'Connor. Hey, Daddy, you want to take this to the bedroom? <laughs> and Scotty the Body. I am officially not only the grill daddy, but I'm a hot grill daddy. Oh, wow. It's the Miguel and Holly Uncensored Podcast. Only from Hot 101.5, Tampa Bay's new hip music. Well, hello. We are back. Yeah. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. another podcast, which you can find on the Hot 101.5 app and on YouTube. Just type in Miguel and Holly. And we have a special guest, two special guests joining us uh, today on the podcast. Right now, actually. Right now, actually. Who's on the phone line on our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? It's Obi and Ashley. Hey! hey! Yeah, 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 all right. Man, that's a warm welcome. Yes, how are you guys? How are you guys? We're doing fantastic. Qu- question is, how are you guys? Mm. We real good. We are, we are elated. It yes. is so exciting to live in Tampa Bay right now. Right? Yeah, it is. So so really quickly, let's just kind of start this off because, you know, we are sister stations and I do want our listening audience to kind of get, get a little bit of love on the both of us, how yeah. we are family. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. this really, it, it's exciting for sister cities yeah. to have something major like this going on. So so we just basically want to talk about y'all's energy and, <laughs> and how this is going to look for the next two weeks. How's the city feeling? Obi and I were talking about, we told our audience how we're both from the Tampa Bay area. We remember the last time the Super Bowl happened. And oh, yeah. I was out at the Super Bowl parade. I was 15 years old. So oh. this is like a long time coming. Mm. Yes. It is sort of like everyone is vibrating right now yeah. from energy. I mean, you can just feel it. I know on Sunday, um, I went to Publix, and you, everybody in Publix had on a buck shirt. Yes. That's what I've noticed. I've never seen that happen before. Usually in Tampa Bay, you see a lot of people celebrating the Lightning, right? Because they've been like this winning franchise, and they, they do a really good job. Their organization does a good job of putting out like paraphernalia to the community. So like you see people with car flags and whatever else. This is the first time since I've lived in Tampa Bay that I've seen anything like that for the Bucks. And I mean, I was dropping off my friend's kid after school yesterday. And in her neighborhood, there was at least five houses. They were like condos yeah. with like Bucks flags off the mm-hmm. front door and all this stuff. And I was like, what, well, you've been hiding that stuff? Or you just <laughs> get it? Like, where did you, what y'all doing? But it's so cool because it's such a feeling of camaraderie. I was going to say, isn't that funny? It is, I know we all say that. And like, and then, of course, Patriots fans are like, oh, yeah, you guys jumping on the Brady bandwagon. But it is what it is. You know, you, you bring that kind of energy to a city and to a team. And sure, he definitely helped get the team get, th- get there. But even if they're going to jump on a bandwagon, it brings a new energy, a new vibe to the city. Listen. Let us say something oh, about yeah, bandwagon please. fans. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Tampa Bay. <laughs> is a bandwagon city. I'm a bandwagoner. Because we are a transient city. Like, none of us here, Miguel, Holly, and Scott, are from Tampa Bay. Everyone in my friend group came here from somewhere else, and so that's what we do. But everybody's finally gotten gotten onto the bandwagon, and we're having fun driving it. Okay, and number two two thing about bandwagons is why would you, like, I, I don't quite understand this theory of like, oh, well, you're a bandwagon fan. You're not a real fan. Like, why do you have this? Not you, obviously, anybody. uh, But, like, why does that that type of person who hates the bandwagoners, why do they feel the need to be better? Mm -hmm. Because they, like, they made it through the tough times. Like, that's cool. And and that's awesome (laughs) that you did that. And, and, like, more power to you. But if you're really a true fan of this team, you want as many fans as possible to fill that stadium. Or, you know, in the COVID cases, to put their flags on their cars. You want, like... The Lightning didn't get this way by being like, well, y'all can't be real fans. You just came on board with Stamkos, whatever. You know, like, for the Bucks, they were losing for a long time. (laughs) You're not going to pull new people towards your organization with, like, you know, that that sort of, um, well, I mean, the the people are there, but no, they're not. When, When teams are winning, people get excited. You want those people because ultimately it's better for the team. It's better for the city. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. let me ask you guys like this. That. Are you guys sending Scotty the body out to do any crazy stunts or <laughs> your way, trying to work your way into that stadium since tickets are 10, 15 grand? 
Now, normally, mm-hmm. yes, if this were happening in any other time, we would have had so many things planned, so many things ready to go. But because of COVID, we're sort of doing it all from a distance. Our hands are a little tight they yeah, really because Which, of that. It's, it's like the greatest thing because while it's kind of unfortunate, whereas like the rest of the world and everyone is suffering and going through dealing with COVID in Tampa Bay, we're like, yes! But we're <laughs> yeah, still in Florida's COVID, right? But like we can't truly celebrate how we normally would have celebrated if this were happening outside of a world pandemic. Well, let's let's rewind back to the Stanley Cup. They're all drinking out of it. What's the- <laughs> well, that's true. That's well, true. We should check on those people and see how they're doing now. Oh. <laughs> it didn't look too good. Oh, yeah, I know. That's, that's good. Well, okay. So, so here, let me paint another picture for those who are listening in on the fact that you know, in a, in a lot of our uh, industries, in, in in this industry, in a lot of our buildings, there are multiple stations. So. For you guys, how's the energy around the building? It's been good. Yeah. But we don't really see anyone. Oh, man, again with COVID, this really, it's it's such it's, a, it's so it's muted. a blessing and a curse. Right. Because, the, first of all, if they had scheduled the Super Bowl to have been in, like, California or something, I don't think they could have had it. Like, they would have had to have moved it. Or if they did have it, it would have been, like, players only. So it's kind of a blessing that it was in Florida because we're so open and we can do these things. But on the flip side, you know, speaking of our company, we share the same company. You guys deal with the same rules as we do. Like, there's not that many people in the building. And the people that are in the building, uh, we see them and we're like, yay, go Bucks!" (laughs) But you do it with your mask on, six feet away. And there's just not that many of us. So, like, it's sort of like seeing the same three people and you're like, you pumped? Yeah. You pumped? Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. (laughs) And then you air bump each other. You're like, yeah, get it. It's just, I think between friend groups, there's a lot of like meme sharing and like what shirts are you getting? That's like going to be your new big thing as we support this team. And, and it's, it's still exciting. It's just, it looks different. It is. It's very different, but I, I will tell you just to not make it feel like, oh my gosh, what's happening in Tampa Bay. Do they truly appreciate this? I see and feel that energy on social media. Oh, my gosh. That's where I truly feel it and where people are letting their fandom out Mm. since you can't do it in groups of people or in the hallways. You see it on social media, people making Bucks cupcakes or finally getting Bucks gear for the first time. That's where you truly feel what's happening in the city. And I will add to that real quick. It, what has been, I think, probably the best thing that's happened, aside from the fact that this would have been cool regardless, coming out of such a hotly contested and tragic political season, this has been a healing breath mm-hmm. of fresh air yes. for the city. Yes. Like, it's still going on in the rest of the country, and you see that on social yeah. media, but but this gives at least Tampa Bay a chance to be like, I don't even care for right now. Our team is in the Super Bowl, and it gives you yeah, a much like, needed distraction. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's happening? We're just worried about the Bucks. Yes. Hey, let me ask you this: Do you guys have much interaction with any of the players? Like, how are they in, in with the city? Uh, once again, because of COVID. Well, no, I don't think they ever have. But like, we never had interaction with well, the I, Lightning much. No, no, they have because I know that they're. Remember, Holly, we did an event at a school that's connected to the Bucks. They have like some sort of program. So like they do stuff in the community. They do, not it's with not, us though. No, not with us, but they do stuff. Yeah. But we haven't seen any of them. Not for lack of trying. Yeah. We have <laughs> tried to get Tom Brady. I can't tell or you how Bronx. many times Scott has tweeted Tom Brady now. Yeah, many Scott, times. Well, what was your last tweet to Tom Brady, Scott? I just tweeted. I'm like, you know, hey, welcome to the city. Like, if there's anything, you know, I've mentioned him in songs that I've made. Like, if he wants to throw the football around, we've talked about him on the show. <laughs> I don't know. If the guy needs some practice, I'm here to catch. So there you go. There you go. Exactly. Man, that's so good of you guys. You need to pull up uh, to his new house on the boat. Uh-huh. <laughs> the first, there. first, I got to get a boat. We did pretend on the air today that I had Giselle over for tea the other day. Um, <laughs> but, and we, I tried to figure what that would be like. But, yeah, I wish that we had more one-on-one. Like, I wish we could tweet them and have that that thing. I'll I think tweet they're them now. So, oh, good. Thanks. Uh, I think that they're so laser-focused on this game that they don't have any they, they have blinders on. For sure. Oh, yeah. sure. Well, well, listen, for us, we don't have an NFL team, but we do have the Orlando Magic. Yeah. And so as much as we've got a great relationship with them, man, it's so hard to get those players on the air. And it's, you know, 
Uh, that, well, hold on. First, let me just say this. When we do get the players on the air, as much as we love our Orlando Magic, man, those guys, um, they, 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 you know, they're just not interview ready. Mm, yeah. Really, yeah. Really, really, yeah. Really, really, A lot of sports players are just, they, they play sports. Yeah. They don't, they don't communicate <laughs> to the public that well. We're going, to, we're going to try our hardest. You know, we're going to try our hardest to make sure that that, that life is good and continue playing it together as a team. Yeah, and you're like, oh, hey, okay. bro, come on. Listen, my cousin. Oh gosh, and I'm about to mess up some sports name. Oh, here we go. This, oh, no. But it's been so long. My cousin played on the same team. Oh, I want to say. Dwayne Wade, maybe. What? Dwayne Wade? Hold on. He was he from Atlanta. Oh gosh. I don't I have to look and see. But anyway, my cousin was on the same basketball team as him for years. Like professionally? Uh no, no, no. This is in high school. In high school. Oh, okay. And like, yeah, okay. and they graduated and then like I Dwayne, I don't know if it's Wade or it's a different one, but like they had like uh Nike bought him like a sports car like at his graduation. But we were all like we're going to need you to get some media training before you go out into the universe and give interviews because you need to learn how to speak oh, yeah. up. But that's mm-hmm. how it is for all of them. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And a lot oh, of funny. them don't care. They're like, um, I make millions of dollars. <laughs> Why should they yeah. care? <laughs> Why should they care? They're like, I can do my craft. Why do I need to know, to know oh. how to speak to you? <laughs> Yo, let me, let, me, let me share. Okay, so I'm not going to mention who it is, but we have a really good friend that he is a, a, a Major League Baseball player. Mm. He's a rookie. I've uh, been playing for the past two years. He's on top of his game. Oh. Dude, he gets paid $300,000 to sit for two hours doing uh, si- signing autographs. What? <gasps> three hundred grand in one huh. day. Dude, does so he need a fill in? Uh, <laughs> well, I have to pay to sign autographs. I mean, I have great handwriting. I mean, I can help hey, out. Third? Oh, Fine. man. So that just put it in perspective to me that these guys, uh, you know, they, they, man, they've got money coming in from areas we don't even know. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. And uh, by the way, it was yeah. not Dwayne Wade. It was Dwight Howard. Oh, That's hey. Good was. Orlando Magic there. Okay. Sorry. I know there was a DNA. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, good old Dwight. Yeah, okay. Good deal. Orlando hated him when he left. They yeah. Put him down, like, bye. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, people get really tied on the athletes. That's sorry. what ha- you know. It obviously we don't need to say, but that's what happened with Tom Brady. But right. yeah, it's it's tough. It can be tough. <laughs> well, and I'm curious for you two as Tampa natives that you know left the area. How does how did it feel when you heard that Tom Brady was coming to play on the Bucks? Oh well, okay. So Ashley and I both from there. So I, I, I mean, I guys like for me the the Buccaneers themselves. I remember the old stadium. I remember the old logo. Like I went to Buchanan, um, Buchanan Middle School, there off of uh, it's over there in Northdale. Mm. And the I remember when the logo changed, and we were all so excited that it went from that weird looking pirate dude with the knife in his yeah. teeth <laughs> to 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 the new logo. So, so there is, there's still a love that Ashley and I both have for that stadium, for anything that happens with that team. Uh, we do know that just like the Orlando Magic, you know, Orlando has the Orlando Magic's back. We do. E- even when they lose, we we still like them. We're just very dormant. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like the Bucks. Right. Yeah. So just like the Bucks, you you still love them. You still have a passion for them. But damn, you know, we we love them when they when they win. Yeah, yeah it's with a little the news more. News of Tom Brady coming there. Obviously, I think there was excitement because everybody knew he's a winner. So that's mm. that's the excitement right everybody mm-hmm. knows he wins super bowls everybody knows he brings organizations to these championship levels so i think that was cool regardless if you like the guy before or not exactly our boss here is a huge new england patriots fan like he brings us brady videos as motivation for <laughs> our job oh wow so he, yeah it was uh pretty interesting but i think it's exciting even if it's bandwagon like the tom brady thing that definitely brought a lot more excitement to it, it who knows does. if we be here without him or not yes exactly. It, oh exactly right what miguel tried to get this phrase right for a long what was it the rising tide lifts oh, all God. ships or yeah. something? <laughs> rising tide lifts yeah. all Boats, whatever ships. Jet tom skis. brady is the <laughs> rising tide so <laughs> Y'all took something so philosophical and made it so street. Yeah, yeah. that's how we do. Jeskies. That's what we do. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, but no, that is cool. You know, I, I will say something out there to some of those fans because I do know that there are some haters that are like, oh, well, you know, uh, it's it's only because of Brady and whatnot. But um, but to be honest, you know, Brady didn't come to the Bucks because he just wanted to play anywhere. There's exactly. something beautiful. There's something magical. There's something magnetic about the city of Tampa. Mm. And man, I'm I'm so fired up for y'all. 
And yeah. I hope over these next two weeks, man, yeah, y'all take advantage of everything and anything you can. Oh, Absolutely. Will do. We will do. We will just um sort of, you can live vicariously through us in the city. We're yes. going to just keep putting out the good sure. vibes. We are. We're keeping an eye on all your social posts. We saw the ones the other day of all the people honking. Yes. So we're definitely going to be keeping up with it all. Yes. Yeah, so we need to hear your honks from Orlando as we cheer on the Bucks <laughs> next weekend yep. for the big game. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and we'll keep in touch with you guys, so we'll check in probably next week. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. All right, family. Good to talk to you. You too. Bye-bye. All right, Bye, guys. You. Bye. So that was Obi and Ashley from our sister station, K92.3? Yes. Yes. Right? Um, In Orlando. And, Scott, we talked to them uh, right before the new year because you auditioned to be on their radio station. Yeah, I did. I did a like a, a whole show mm -hmm. for a couple hours over there right before the new year started. Yep. Yeah, what happened with that? You know, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. I'm still waiting to hear oh. something about it. it. It's not a bad thing. I won't say it's a bad thing. I haven't heard anything. I think, you know, I'm still waiting because a lot of stuff has to be processed and the boss has to listen back and they have to go to their boss and then their boss. And so they kind of just be like, just wait. We don't know. You're no still news on hold. Is good news. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. So no news for me yet. But I'm hoping soon I'll get some news because I've been telling my dad, like, hopefully there's some good news coming, Pops. Right. He's like, don't tell me until it happens. And I'm like, all right, oh. I'll wait, even though I'm like ready for it to happen. Right. So we'll see. So I don't know. I think, you know, honestly, I don't know if we even talked about it, but I think I crushed it. I think I did the best I've ever done doing a show by myself in another studio. Like, it was phenomenal. So no matter what, I was grateful to do it. I always find it so interesting how in radio, you know, none of us are millionaires. None of us <laughs> yeah. have huge responsibilities. There's like three, three people. Three people right. are millionaires. Right, right. That That's about it. But the hiring process in radio is so arduous that <sighs> you would think that we are paid millions of dollars. Like, it was a three-month process for us to get hired here. And I was like, It started actually bruh. longer than that because weren't you... When were you first reached out to? I was, it was the beginning of <laughs> Why December. do I want to say November? Yeah, okay, so December. Well, no, 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 you're right. The first message the first was message. in early November. And then, and then the first phone call about, hey, so we might have a position. We're not sure yet, but are, are y'all interested? Was in early December. Yeah. Um, that Because I was on top of the uh, bus for, I used to live on a bus for a week in a Panama City Casual. for this, I know, right? For this uh, fundraiser stuff, the bus campaign we did. And I remember every night we had like a different high school choir come sing and entertain people that came to give uh, toys. And we were listening to this choir sing and my phone rang and it was a Tampa number. And I was mm -hmm. like, that's weird. So on top of this bus, there was a porta potty that I went to and I was like, hey, it's Miguel. And it was like, hey, I'm the program director of Hot 101.5. And I was like, so just for context, I'm in a porta potty on top of a school bus. And the voices you hear is a high school choir singing to help us raise toys for kids. Maybe that was a good thing. That was a great thing. It showed that you're active in the community. Yeah. Absolutely. And also show that I'm willing to do anything. That is true. Yes. Anything. Like my hoo-hoo and my ha-ha. Exactly. I was just gonna, can we circle back real quick to yeah. the to the conversation we just had? Yeah. Do you think that they are disappointed in us? You know, I think it's, you can't be disappointed in us because it really comes down to the time of everything. Like right. it's, as much as it, there's obviously a lot of exciting things happening, but there still is a pandemic happening. I know it's hard. And it's I maybe, hard. like, it just, it struck me as they were asking these questions. If like our fam members have these same questions, mm. cause it seems logical, right? Yeah, no, somebody They're asked like, me the other day, like, are you going to the super? I'm like, First You're off, like, I don't got that much money. <laughs> you got $14,000 for a ticket. But people might think that, like, we have access to stuff that I we wish. simply don't. So, like, even them, they're like, well, are you going to go do some crazy stuff? No. What about talking to the players? No. Well, what about in the hallways? Again, no. Like, it just seemed like they expected it to be a lot bigger. And I'm wondering if our fan members are expecting it to be a lot bigger. But, like... Is there pull, anything we could do? Can to we pull the curtain back? Bitter? It's just not. No, we're doing this much as we can. No, I mean, and I'll tell you, just to be completely honest, like when the Super Bowl was in Miami last year, you know, before COVID. Yeah. You know, COVID was here. That was one of the it. last major events, by the way, for the U.S. Yeah, it was the last big thing. It was. That was it. But 
we had tickets to I think like Shaq's party that we gave away. Oh, yeah. Fun we house. had tickets. I forgot about that. And then remember, I don't remember how, but uh, Evander, who used to do digital stuff for us, remember he got tickets he got somehow to some party. Right? No, no, he, he went, went to, to the, the extra game. Bowl. Oh yeah! Remember he went to the no. Game. I forgot. I yeah. forgot. Like how? And right? so maybe, maybe in different times, yeah, we could have like scammed our way in being like, well, we we need to do this for for work purposes. Right. Believe me, I've done that before. Oh, absolutely. But there's just no way. No, you know? I mean, and then I, I think there would have been a way if we weren't dealing and we weren't in COVID times. It's just sort of like everything is reimagined right now. And that's why it is good that it's happening for us in our city because we have something positive to focus on yeah. dealing with COVID. But it sucks because we don't get the true experience exactly. of having the Super Bowl in our city. Right. Like, everyone else does when it comes to their town and who knows how long it'll be before we get it again. That makes me sad. Actually. I just got sad. Cause remember how exciting it was like three years ago when they locked it in mm -hmm. and we're like 2021 Ooh. baby is happening. Right. I and mean, finally it's here and it's like, sit your ass down. Right. I mean, I, it just, it, re it really does suck because I had thoughts like I hadn't written anything down, but in my head, I was like, well, maybe we can reach out to the mayor's office you know, um, and see if we can get some sort of access through that channel. Uh, maybe through our marketing director, Mike Olivero, maybe we can get access to, you know, even if it's not Tom Brady or actually at that time, there was, they weren't even on the team. Yeah. But I was like, maybe we can get access to someone from the Bucks organization to sort of help us out. So like my mind had already started last yeah. year, the beginning of the year, thinking about what does it look like? Because I was watching our because we have a sister station in Miami and I was watching how they were dealing with having the Super Bowl in their city mm -hmm. and I was like oh that's a good idea or maybe we can expand on that mm -hmm. so the process in my mind had started thinking about how we could do that right there are there would have been endless possibilities right like I, we would have sent Scott out to get like drunk audio from everybody at the bar celebrating because you know think about it last January it wouldn't have even been a thought that the Bucks could have would made be it. in the Super Bowl. No, that wouldn't have even been a thought about it. But like, I don't want to send you out dealing in COVID times for work because then that makes us liable. And our company and said, our, you can't go out. Well, that's the thing. We have to also have to look at like all radio companies have approached the pandemic differently right. and in and how they are allowing um, events to go on. Mm -hmm. And I will say our company is one of the strictest companies thus far right. like some of the other companies have opened back up and they're doing events yeah. like cautiously mm -hmm. ours is like nope sorry nope that's the thing like when i said no it's not really different in the building because and i don't know how it is for like other radio like iheart and intercom and and all those other companies i don't know how they're doing it but like for us right now the still the only people in this building are on-air personalities that have to be here yeah that's it yeah and even some of those people aren't even coming in they're doing it from home like no. you know what i mean so it's our company is very strict about what we can and cannot do and i don't even think they would allow scott to go out no they wouldn't i mean if we sent you out and you were like well you don't have to go out you can go out and if you just happen to grab some audio and then when management would hear that on the show oh, the yeah. next day, they would flip the bleep out and be like, how could you send him? We're like, well, we didn't. And then they'd be like, well, because you were in such a big crowd, you can't come into. Actually, both of us wouldn't be able to come in because we live together. They would make us quarantine at the house. So it's like it's this domino effective thing. So, yes, it does feel very muted. And it is. I feel bad as a presenter and sort of as like the creative force behind the show and like what we do i've been racking my brain like what can we what can we do what can afar? we do so like what we are planning um if you care is we have a few people that we know because they gave 7500 i believe mm -hmm. tickets to um healthcare workers to go yeah and so we have a couple of fan members that listen that are going to sort of check in with us the day after um, and let us know what the experience was like for like a firsthand point of view. Yeah. And then send us some social media while we're there. So we're trying that way. But it, I personally feel when they were asking those questions, like a letdown. Like I'm like, I'm sorry. I did too. I was a like, bit, yeah. I almost felt like embarrassed. I right. was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm so sorry that you thought this was going to be funner. Right. But it's not. We should label this podcast. I'm sorry. The, uh, <laughs> I'm going to call the fun runer. No, 
we can't help it. No, not but that's us. the thing. It's not us, but like it's almost like when you know something crazy is going down with music or whatever, and listeners come to us directly and they're like, "How dare you take that song out?" And we're like, "I know that you, I'm the one you interact with, but I I'm I have nothing right. to do with this." So sorry, Bachelor. So we'll be doing our best. We have some things. Doing our best. We're doing our best. Like, this is what the earth is saying right now. I'm just doing my best. <laughs> doing Sorry. my best. Keeps on spinning. Hunching up my shoulders. I'm just doing my best. Hanging in there. And there's like a cat picture with a cat hanging. <laughs> That's us right now. Hanging in there. Just hanging. That's our Microsoft Teams emoji right now. Just hanging in there. Yes. Anyway, I just wanted to address that because I felt a little off. And I was like, I, I don't want to like let that go by without addressing that we realize it sounded lame. Yeah. Right. So I don't know because they called us and they're going to play that on their show. So I don't know how much of that conversation. Wait, are they going to play it on the show? Yes. Yeah, because they called us. to. I hope they beep out where we said the SB word. I thought this was just podcast and we're going to be on broadcast. Oh, yeah. No, no. They know. They, they know. They okay. know. So, yeah, they'll, they'll do that. Okay. I mean, I'm sure they're going to chop that down to like two minutes. Oh, and, yeah, it will. Know. But I just didn't want um, an unsolicited SB to go flying on the air and then we get in trouble. Um, so, uh, speak, not speaking of, but what else is going on in life? Uh, before we get out of here, I don't want to just two podcasts in a row of sports stuff because I'd be like, as a non-sports person, I'm like, like, F you. I ain't listening to that. Um, Holly, what's going on in your life? Is everything good? Are you okay? Um, I am okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I think back for the last two weeks. Um, it's been pretty good for the most part. I, I'm a little concerned do I get into this I'm a little concerned because um this weekend my daughter is going up to Panama City oh. for um her grandmother's birthday oh. which is great and I mean she doesn't go that like it's a once in a while thing mm -hmm. she's actually been more times this past like calendar year than um than ever before but mm. I would say they go probably once every three to four months it seems like mm -hmm. so, so this weekend is one of them and as a mom, I just feel like you worry, right? Like that's Absolutely. a normal thing. Yeah. First that she's got to miss school. Second, on a Friday. Second that, you know, I'm not there. And uh, third about, you know, what happens and what goes down when they are there. Not that I don't trust that her father will keep her safe. Right. I know that he would. Um, but it's just that I'm not there. You so don't it just, know. I, I'm a little bajiggity. I'm a little Bidgety. crazy feeling about like, Bidgety, yeah. Bidgety. I just feel a little crazy. And then what happens is that's like when she goes, that's always the perfect opportunity for me to be like, okay, she's not even in town this weekend. I can either like get turned up or like just sit on my ass and do nothing or go somewhere crazy. And so that allows me possibilities. But, and I've been having a hard time with this lately, letting it go in mm. order to enjoy myself. Right. Yeah. Like, no. she'll go, and I'm like, this is great. I have me time. But my brain over here is like, you're failing somehow. You're failing. Uh, what are you doing? Mm. You gotta. You you should probably stress about this. Hello, uh, it's anxiety. Anything mm. could go wrong. Why don't you think about that? Right. And, it, and so it's a struggle for me to kind of like wrestle back control of my brain and be like, no. Stop it. You should rest right. during this time and stop stressing. So I've been dealing with that. Um, as the days come up towards her going to Panama City. No, I totally feel that. I not <sighs> in the same vein, but I weirdly feel that with Abe, mm. my fiance, whenever he travels, mm. because I've never been super dependent on anyone before, I have this like weird fear where I'm like, what happened if he dies? That's interesting. What happens if he gets to a car accident? Maybe it's a dependency thing. And I don't say that in a bad, like, I'm no, not no, using not that word all. harshly. I'm just saying it, Absolutely. it is what it is. Um, yeah. You, you depend on that person. Like, I have shown him sides of me that I would cover up because I felt inadequate. Mm -hmm. And I know that he <laughs> fills those holes. Okay. Um, where I am, where I don't feel sufficient. Yeah. And so I depend on him and he depends on me. And so when I think about him not being there, I'm like, ooh, I don't. Ugh. And so I, I totally understand. It's a different type of anxiety. It's we. It's really but weird. I, I feel that for the first time in my life. Thank you for validating me. Because sometimes, like this happened, and this was a long time ago, maybe several months ago. And she was just at his house for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I let my brain like work itself up. And all of a sudden, all I could think about was 
because he has a boat. I was like, what if they're on the boat right now? And I'm like sitting in my on my couch on a Saturday afternoon thinking this. I'm like, what if they're literally on the boat right now? And the boat hits like a, a rough wave and she gets thrown from the boat and she's not wearing her life jacket because she's six and six year olds don't have to wear life jackets. Yes, they do. And <laughs> she gets thrown off the boat and there's an alligator. And I just I worked myself up so much that mm. I texted him and I'm like, is my OK right now? I just just pl- I just need to know. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt your day. Is she OK? I have mm. a bad feeling, a.k.a. I gave myself a bad feeling. Yeah, right. But it was just, it was so overwhelming. I had to ask him. Mm. And I was like, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry in advance. Just can you let me know what's going on? And he's like, yeah, we're just hanging out. I'm like. Now, I'm okay. curious, not trying to like stir the pot. <laughs> oh, yes. You you are a pot stirrer. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. But how would you feel if he texted you that? If, let's say, you took her on a trip to... I don't know, wherever. Yeah. Miami. Yeah. Something's there that yeah. she wants to see. You took her to Miami. Okay. And it was supposed to be his weekend. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, on a Sunday, he's like, hey, is my okay? How how would you feel? I'm just curious from a parent because I feel like your emotion. Let me try to explain this. I feel like when you become a parent and you become a parent in a, a split household, mm-hmm. your feelings are just automatically more complicated and yeah. it's not ever just black and white. No, it never is. And so to me, as a non-parent, I my first thought was, oh gosh, I'd be like, do you not trust me? Yeah. Do you not think I could keep your child safe? I know. Then so, that's, I, I totally get it because that would be my first reaction too. Like, actually my first reaction right off the bat would probably be eye roll. I'd be like, mm. uh, like, come on. Right. But on the follow up, because I'm a like, a, you know, an enlightened human being, I would be like, OK, well, obviously he cares about her yeah. very much and wants to check. But that's also why I checked myself when I did it to him, because mm. I really try not to. And it actually works because. I can I can see it from both sides. Right. And this is why I can, because my person has a daughter and her mom will often like. I don't want to get too into it, but she's very. Stressed out. Hawkish. Yeah. So when um, he has his daughter, it's like they have to FaceTime twice a day. Oh. And I'm and I see it from his perspective where he's. Same thing as you said, though, Miguel, where he's mm-hmm. like, what what do you think I would do right. that would like result in her death at all? Like, we're over right. here tie dyeing shirts. Like, what? <laughs> but so I and then I try to explain to him and I'm like, OK, I can see it where like because it's just it like she is her everything. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I see it from that other perspective, too, where you can get so out of control that you're like, I have to know what's going on now. But, and this is where I would say, like, if uh, Chris did this to me, if, if, like, I was in Miami with her, with Maya, and he all of a sudden texted me, was like, I just, I got a bad feeling, like, is everything going okay with Maya? Like, are, is she safe? I'd be like, <sighs> mm. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, thank you for texting. Do you want to talk to her real quick? And yeah. uh, I'd ask Maya, do you want to talk to your dad real quick? Do you want to talk to him? Let's do a call, a phone call real quick. Hey, yay. Mm. Maybe that'll make everybody feel better. Right. And that's okay. I think what happens, and maybe this is just my personal opinion. Maybe nobody else shares this opinion. You have to allow for like a little bit of that. Right. You have to, however, check yourself before it goes overboard. So like when I called, when I texted him that day that I, visualized Maya falling off the boat and getting eaten by an alligator. Uh, I did my one check in. Right. And then I was like, I will not Mm. bother them again. Right. Unless it's like an emergency on my end. Of course. Um, but same thing. So like if he was gonna check in with me, I'd be like, "Eh, whatever, it's fine. Let's do the check in. We're good. We good. You're good. If he did it like three more times that weekend, now I'm like, What's the issue here? Yeah. What you doing? And then I would hold myself accountable to that too. I would never try to interrupt their weekend more than once with some mm. nonsense where I'm like felt like she's gonna fly off a boat. Like <laughs> if I did it on a Saturday, I'm not also doing it again on a Sunday. I'm not checking in on Saturday night. Right. I, in fact, I rarely check in at all. Mm. But I kind of give a little bit of allowance 
for at least one. That makes sense. Well, and I feel like it's a situation where you have that initial feeling. Like I always say, you can't help how you feel, but you can help how you react. And yeah. That is exactly the case here. So you feel the way and you're like, all right, I understand the situation. Let's do what I need to do to make the other parent feel comfortable. And then let's move on with their day. Right. And let's not let it bring the situation and the good time we're having on the boat or in this fictional Miami trip <laughs> down, you know. Right. So that totally makes sense. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like, and I haven't said, because like I said, she's going on this trip to Panama City. I haven't said anything to her dad and I'm not going to. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do my regular rigmarole, which I'm sure he is like so sick of by now but like Jess you know make sure you're careful which I'm sure he's like what the f do you think I am <laughs> but I just say it because that's the same thing as like when you were young your parent when you're walking out the door buckle your seatbelt it's just it's muscle memory it shows that you care yeah mm -hmm. and so I'm gonna you know go through my rundown now if you da, 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 but I will not reach out to them at all Wow. During when they're in Panama City. And that's why that's why I go back to it's a little tough for me to kind of like let that go. But that's my job to work on that. Absolutely. That totally makes sense. And that's brave of you to admit that, too, because oh. a lot of people wouldn't. I'm just trying to be open and honest with you. Scott, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. Yeah. I, you know, I feel like I'm just kind of taking everything day by day right now. I feel I put on like on my Instagram at Scott Tavlin. I could do like questions every now and then. And People ask me some good questions. They're like, how are you really? Oh. Or like, are you allowing yourself, you know, to like process all your emotions and everything? And I think I am. I think the one thing I said is like, I'm tired. I'm more tired than I was last year because I'm doing a lot more stuff right now, which is awesome because I'm grateful to be able to have the opportunities. But I am adjusting. So like, as my life continues to get more busy, I'm having to readjust how I go about life. Mm. But I've been allowing myself to do a lot of like just fun, random things and stay up later, hanging out with people and doing new adventures and just saying yes to stuff. So I think with all that being said, I'm doing all right. Any challenges with it? What, Miguel, what are you doing? No, I was just thinking. <laughs> no, I was, the biggest challenge. Right? I mean, I just, kind of, I'm sorry. I just, you were like, I don't know if I believe you. If I, I felt like we were on 2020. <laughs> I just, our my brain has to move. My brain doesn't move naturally as fast as it has to on the show mm. and so on the podcast i get to actually like listen to what you're saying and not just be like burr, burr, and take burr. time here's ariana grande like i get to process what you say and be like well interesting well what what else is like what is the challenge with that because i feel like when you have so many life changes and yeah. you are trying to be positive about it and go on these new adventures challenges can can pop up well i mean you in, know in my experience yeah we talked about it a little bit more uh, i think it was the last podcast or the podcast before that where i've had a lot more time to just kind of process the you know the tough losses that i had last year and those are coming up more frequently and i'm trying to really grasp how i go about it because i don't want to push things down and i don't want to avoid the way i'm feeling those moments and i do want to reiterate because again like people said it on my instagram like allow yourself to grieve and i like i do it's just i i will always go off of how i feel and when i'm up i'm up and i don't want to allow myself not to be up because i think i should like somebody else thinks i should be grieving it's like this, like honestly just it's who i am i'm just this up you know quote unquote annoying just highly energized highly positive person and that's how i view life and if anything i've opened my eyes to how serious i want to take getting the most out of life. And so that's kind of how I'm going about it. The challenges that stand before me are just making sure that it's like I have the foundation set for how I make those things happen. So like for me, the biggest thing I struggle with, even though I love health and, you know, fitness and everything is like I don't sleep. And I'm really starting to realize that it's like, Scott, if you want to actually do all these things, if you want to actually be able to accomplish those big ass dreams, yeah, you're going to need to sleep because like at this time currently as we're doing the podcast, like my body's like starting to slowly go down quick. And I'm like, wait, there's so much I still need to do. <laughs> and if I want to be able to do it, well, I got to really think about how I go about, you know, getting rest because it is like the most important thing. And then, yeah. you know, again, I'll, I'll bring it up again like I did last podcast. The biggest problem I have, the biggest challenge is that there's a lot of cool stuff happening in my life. There's so much that is about to happen. And I'm so excited. And the hardest part about all of it is that, you know, some of the biggest supporters in my life aren't there to hear me say it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that kills me and if like there's the biggest challenge that I, that's it it's when i get out of the studio and i want to just call someone and be like 
I can't believe this happens. Like, I'm not someone that likes to gloat about everything happened in my life, but you know, you, want, you everyone deserves to share their excitement. Yeah, well, it's it, different. That's not gloating. That I is know. sharing your excitement, which is a normal human behavior. And well, and one of the things that I just I love to do is I just you know, my mom and I's relationship was always like, you know. I'm so thankful I did this, but you know, one of our last conversations, I really got to break down to her because she just, I don't know if it was just kind of, she would just say it offhand, but she'd be like, well, we did the best we could like raising you. Like, you know, maybe it wasn't the best. I was like, mom, like, no, like you were the best. Like I wouldn't be doing anything without the support that you and dad have given me every step of the way, because I've heard so many stories where people and kids have told their parents, their dreams and their parents didn't take it seriously. I was like, you all, have dealt with all the crap that I've gone through every step of the way when I was going through college and I was switching majors every other year. And I was like, I don't know what I want to do. You were just like, cool, you'll figure it out. When I went into radio, like, all right, sweet. Let's see it. You started listening. And so the biggest challenge right now with all of it is like, things are about to get really, really cool. And I just wanted to be able to share that with my mom. And I wanted to be able to tell her that, Hey, like I told you, I told you when you said I could do it, I told you I was going to do it. And now it's happening. And, you know, the thing that gets me through is like, I, you know, I, I look up the sky and I talk to my mom as if she's there. And I just have the feeling that she's looking down at me and able to see these things. And that's honestly how I'm able to wake up in the morning, because without the thought of that, I wouldn't be able to keep going because she was the one that I turned to every day to be like, we're getting a little step further. Mm -hmm. We're making a little bit more progress because it's not a thing that just happens overnight. And I, you're going into and this is why I kind of want to be a motivational speaker. It's like when you're going after your dreams, you don't know if they're actually going to happen. You have no idea, but you're going into this abyss of just who knows, but I'm going to keep trying until it happens. And now I start to see things happening. And I, I put something on my Instagram today. It's like that little think about where you were two years ago. Instead of thinking about how you're not where you want to be right now, think about how far you've come in just two years. And I thought about that for myself and it started getting me like teary eyed because I'm like, holy crap. It is happening. Yeah. Like there are things happening and you know, this is little things. Like I going to be interviewed on the news tomorrow for the song I made for the bucks. And I got to be featured again on, you know, Fox 13. It's like, Holy crap. Like taking this moment, like this is really cool. You've been working your ass off to have these little things happening and now they're starting to happen. And you know, I'm just forever thankful that, you know, I do have the support that I have because it keeps me going. And just, again, the biggest challenge right now is that I just, I wish I was able to just show all these things continuing going on to, you know, my mom, my grandma and be like, see, it is happening. Mm -hmm. Your support, your belief. I told you it was happening and here it is. And we're getting that much further. So that's kind of like, those are the biggest roadblocks right now. That's the stuff that it's like when it's late at night and I'm kind of thinking to myself on how the day went. That's the little side that's like, it kind of feels like a gut punch every time. As good as everything is, it's like always that little reminder of like, there's that too. I think what will be cool for you is if you did a book about letters to your mom, mm. where all of these experiences where you wish that you could pick up the phone and talk to her, mm. jot those thoughts down and like write it out in a letter. I think that would be so healing and cathartic for you. And if for you especially, right, then it could help other people. Absolutely. And if, if you, you wanted ever to, wanted to right, share. if you yeah. wanted to, if not, whatever, it's for you. Yeah. But I think that would be really cool is to put it in letter form. And yeah. so you can remember and look back because then that's sort of like your record of how far you've come and how your messaging and your thoughts and your love for your mom has been present and her presence has been there with you this entire time. Yeah, I, I have actually had a, a good friend reach out and actually she sent me a, a notebook and like a good set of pens and like, hey, this she had a loss in her life and it was like, I wrote all the thoughts that I had and I just kept it in this journal and I wanted to just pass that on to you. Like, if you want to, go ahead. If you don't, and it's, it's something I've been meaning to sit down and do and I think I'm slowly getting to that point where I'm able to sit down and just be like, okay, just... Put your thoughts out there mm. because as I have all the thoughts, it's just a lot of the times I just don't know how to express it. I don't know who to go to to talk Man, about that's it. It's hard to. And so. even for writing it, I struggle with that because yeah. I'd like to write a book one day about um, just my life experiences over just, I mean, really just over the past couple of years. Yeah. And I, one day I opened up my laptop and I wrote down like main thoughts that could maybe be chapters. I just wrote down like, words or phrases and then after i did that i was like yeah i did that and i have not gone back to that because i'm like 
I don't know how to do this. Right. Which I know every writer is like, yes, you do. You just write it. I'm like, no, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But I guess it's just like, it's just a very difficult thing. It sounds easy. Well, just do it. Right. But you, it, it is difficult. Absolutely. It's, it's difficult to figure out how and what to say. Right. Right. But you know what's there. And then just writing out those thoughts yeah. that yeah. you would say out loud. And then you don't have to put it into like book form and say, well, this is the semicolon needs to go here. Um, but just saying, here's my raw thoughts. And if you ever want to make it a book, that's what the publisher does. They'll help you put it together. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but for now, it's not t thinking about the book. This is just what you would say to your mom mm. if you could pick up the phone and talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really, I really do like that idea because it is something I think and I've heard is very therapeutic. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, like I said, it's like I'm getting a little closer to actually taking that step and being like, all right, sit down, process this and say it out loud. Because again, like I said in the beginning, the hardest thing right now is it's I'm having more moments where it's like, all I want to do is I, even yesterday, I was like, I almost like went for my phone. I was like, all I want to do is that mm. out of everything. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I think it would help. Scott, what's your social media? At Scott Tavlin, S-C-O-T-T-T-A-V-L-I-N. Holly. Radio Holly on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Not to be confused with Holly Radio. Oh. Who is this very famous Spanish-speaking <laughs> radio and television persona. Really? Are you sure that's I, not you? I have gotten confused with her a few times from <sighs> other Spanish-speaking people, which ah, I don't. Right. Uh, and they'll hit me up and they'll be like, da, 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 and I'll be like, oh, you want the... <laughs> You're like, no, 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 no. You want the one with a million Instagram followers, yes. not me. But oh. yeah, so mine's Radio Holly. Mine is Miguel Fuller, M-I-G-U-E-L-F-U-L-L-E-R. Make sure as part of the platypus posse a pee -pee. to uh, send me an email if you want uh, some Miguel and Holly stickers, Miguel at Hot1015TampaBay.com. And please, it would help us out so much. And we'd love to know what you like and don't like about the podcast. So leave yeah. us a review on Apple Podcast. And make sure you can listen on Spotify, on the Hot 101.5 app, or at hot1015tampabay.com. And thanks again to Jacob Two Times for helping us start the show today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can see all of this in its entirety on our YouTube channel. So just type in Miguel and Holly on YouTube, and we will see you later. Yep. Friday. Bye. Catch, up, catch, up, catch up with the previous episodes of the Miguel and Holly Uncensored Podcast from Hot 101.5. Just hit up the Hot 101.5 app, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Search Miguel and Holly Uncensored. Uncensored.